Hey there, I'm Mark from Spectrum Pulse, and today we have from Oliver Anthony Music, Hymnal of a Troubled Man's Mind. I bet a lot of you did not know that this came out, and I bet a whole bunch more of you are surprised that I'm giving this any attention at all. But then again, my opinions on Oliver Anthony have always been a little more complicated than discourse allowed him to be in the mainstream. I didn't really care for Rich Men North of Richmond, go back and see Billboard Breakdown, but having a slightly deeper grounding in that brand of acoustic indie country helped me understand the attempt at pathos a little better. It's less Zach Bryan, maybe more Cold Chaney, even if the execution felt amateurish at best. As I've said before, if a song like that showed up on my list of Patreon song requests, I probably would have vetoed it, because for me it would have felt like punching down. Now since then, Oliver Anthony's story has taken a couple of turns. When conservative media discovered he was less willing to toe their line, he got elbowed out of the picture pretty fast. But there was a groundswell of organic support who have stuck around, and he was able to record this project with Dave Cobb, one of the best producers working in Indian country today and then the album dropped on Easter from out of nowhere. Now I got mixed feelings about that choice but I was curious enough to check out this album and oh boy what we have is gonna be a tough sell for a lot of audiences which I do think Anthony knows by the way where between the expected acoustic ballads we got passages of scripture the majority drawn from the Old Testament Book of Ecclesiastes. Now for those of you who don't know, and yes, we are doing Bible study again, Ecclesiastes was one of the more hotly debated books in the Old Testament for millennia because of how contradictory and existentialist it can be, with framing such that everything we do in life is futile and vanity and pointless, because what can we possibly know about God's judgment afterwards, where you can read that book as utterly pessimistic, borderline biblical doomerism, or in a larger context, somewhat life-affirming. If you can't control your final end and your pursuits are just for vanity and endless suffering, if you learn to live with it, there is a certain stoicism to coming out the other side. Now that context seems to paint Oliver Anthony as a pretty religious man with a painstakingly scrupulous conscience, deeply mistrustful of any authority of any kind, and burdened with a rather bleak, almost apocalyptic Dick life is suffering worldview as he's tormented by some of his vices and demons. This is a sermon. It's not likely going to be enjoyable so much as a stirring of emotion. So you know what, on a certain level, I get how records like this can be effective, especially if you're of a specific religious background. There's a lot of iconography built up around troubled but stoic men who see the world going to shit around them and letting loose a scream for any kind of answer or release. It's very, very Maguire of them, religious trappings included. And you know what, for what it's worth, Dave Cobb is giving Oliver Anthony all the space he needs for for every spare organic texture to really ring forth. The resonator guitar and any of the touches of fiddle sound impressively good, even if the actual guitar work can feel kinda underwhelming. And for a mix that's this minimal, where the bass and percussion is limited, that's kind of essential that the texture is there. But again, while there's a lot that can be done to clean up the details, Cobb's doing his best, the execution at the core kind of leads a lot to be desired, and a lot of it comes down to Anthony as a performer. Leaning into the religious framing, it makes sense, but it seems like it was an excuse to ditch any degree of emotive subtlety. And when you have a project with no groove or any forward momentum, and little in the way of instrumental foundation, there needs to be a little bit more variance in the core performance, or it can become hectoring or one-dimensional very fast. And it's a bleak listen, too. Oliver Anthony seems somewhat aware that his interpretation of scripture and way of living is rather quite dark, and that note of wallowing angst under God echoing Appalachian decay is hammered repeatedly, where even if the scripture might take a slightly more positive turn near the end, his writing kind of doesn't, which doesn't really create much of an internal arc or narrative so much as one step forward, two steps back. And it kind of makes the project feel like a slog. And again, the poetry is still kind of amateurish. Even accepting that part of this album's edge comes with that steady drumbeat of suffering and misery. There's so little flair to the scenes that he's painting that even if the bluntness of his complaints is the point, it kind of loses some impact and makes some lines just outright bizarre, like people eating bugs because they won't eat bacon on Doggone It, or observations about self-driving cars and those who work in government and it's just 
kind of really shallow. Or how Always Love You Like a Good Old Dog, it's directed at his partner. And while a lot of the sincerity behind the song is real, so is the clunkiness. And I'll say it, I don't think any of the politics are that interesting or poignant. We're not dealing with a systemic view of any of the issues, and the individualized frustration doesn't really have any call to action beyond just going to live off the land. I, I don't think Oliver Anthony sees a world where this situation gets better, even despite some of his newfound success. And while it might provide a moment of catharsis on one song, an album full of that message, you're probably going to lose patience, even if on some level, you agree with him. It's just too much. So to summarize, look, Oliver Anthony has said a number of times that he feels uncomfortable with mainstream attention, and on this album, he proves exactly why. It's kind of simplistic, it's heavy-handed, it lacks direction, the religious element is extremely pronounced. And even if it is well-produced, when there's so little in the way of tune or groove, it's not going to get you that far. Now, are there any songs worth hearing? Well, Cobwebs and Cocaine actually has some electric sizzle and stomp to go along with the incredibly dark storytelling. The fiddle solo on I Want to Go Home is nice, and some of the hangdog introspection of Feeling Pretty Good, it was a welcome glimpse of optimism. Could have used a little more of that. Outside of those, look, there is a niche alongside acts like Cole Chaney, Pony Bradshaw, Ian No, maybe even early Zach Bryan in a pinch, especially if you find the religious angle more resonant to his target audience. I get it. But I would also seek out any of those other acts over him. I kind of find this really hard to recommend. If you skip it, you're not going to be missing that much. So yeah, uh, thanks a lot for watching. If you want to see more, please be sure to like, share, drop comments, and subscribe. I know this is going to be a bit of a contentious piece. All of my pieces on Oliver Anthony have been. But again, like it's not that this is terrible. I get the feeling there's going to be a lot of people who will want to have knives out for that. And this album is not as provocative as Rich Men North of Richmond is in that vein. At the same time, the religious severity of the project means it's probably not going to get anywhere close to the same attention. I think he's just fine with that. Bit of an odd case. I'm curious what y'all think down in the comments below. Beyond that, though, anything else I might be able to do to improve my presentation, I'm all ears. If y'all want to get involved in helping support the channel, maybe buying merch, link down there below. Or, hell, do you want to support the channel, get albums on my schedule, maybe even actually just argue with me in my Discord, Link to my Patreon is right over there. Once again, don't feel obligated. Tough times, as I'm sure Oliver Anthony has expressed a number of times. But again, the option is available. Till then, I'm Mark. You're watching Spectrum Pulse. And I'll see you next time.